Before we dive in, let me hit you with a quick joke. A woman walks out of the bathroom, winks at her husband, and says, I shaved down there. You know what that means. The husband responds, Yeah, the drain is clogged. T. San walks through a street with destroyed buildings. He says it's annoying, and he senses some monsters and says, Why the hell are they running all the way there and bothering people? He sees some monsters eating a guy on the floor, and he says, Is that around Anyang? He found him but he seems like he has already been eaten, and he says it's subjective. His system tells him that monster 435, 221, and 222 are glaring at him, and he says what can he do with that insincere name? The monsters charge towards him, and he draws his sword. He triggers the addition and multiplication, and he kills them. Someone is banging on a gate asking for it to be opened. A hard player named Jiam Young Jun greets T. San saying he's back and calling him Hyung. T. San tells him he's so sick of this and says can't he make someone else do it and Young Jun tells him he knows there's no one else to do it except him and he asks of the guy who ran away. He tells him he's dead and that all his body parts were eaten, but there were three A-class monsters eating him though. Young Jun says hard mode players are strong. However a class monsters are on the same level with hard mode players and he says it's dangerous if there are three of them around, they have to deal with them quickly. Young Jun asks him where they are and he says he has killed them all and Young Jun says he sees. T San tells Young Jun he's hungry and says they should go and eat and Young Jun tells him to be honest with him and says he's not really an easy mode player right. T San says what kind of nonsense is that? There are a lot of people who have gone through the labyrinth with him and says why doesn't he ask them. Young Jun says all the easy players are dead except for him. Even the ones that join from time to time die within two days and T. San says, is that so? Honestly how can an easy player survive in the current situation? Even normal players are barely holding on, so it's strange that they can make it until now. Young Jun says how can he be so strong? He's a hard player too. But he's sure he's no match for him and T-San tells him. It's because they cleared it too carelessly and Young Jun says that excuse again. At the mess hall, T-San says potatoes again. Can't they grow something else? And he says there are sweet potatoes and corn too. Young Jun says they can't help it when potatoes are the most efficient and there's also a limit to the amount of cultivation and he says didn't he learn the simple cultivation skill? T-San says how could an easy player learn that? There's a lot of food everywhere and Young Jun says he's just saying. Two guys are fighting outside and T. Sen says it looks like another person who has cleared is there again and Young Jun says it seems like it. T. Sen says this time he will be suppressed after making such a fuss and he will probably need to listen to the explanation step by step and Young Jun says the guy looks like he's a hard player and he thinks T. Sen should step in. Someone asks T. San to hurry and help them, that it's just not a fuss. The guy says they should not make him laugh and says why is he on earth? It was all over on his last return, and he says is there a hidden camera? They shouldn't play around. T. San comes out and asks a guy about Lee T. Yon, and he says she's out on reconnaissance. A man tells the guy that, this is the earth, the world has changed a lot while he was in the labyrinth, and he tells him to calm down and let them talk but the guy hits him and says he shouldn't make him laugh. T. San says he needs to step in and Young Jun tells him to go ahead and T. San tells him that if his potatoes are gone by the time he gets back, he'll kill him. T. San tells him that unfortunately he's on earth and humanity is dying now. The guy says he shouldn't make him laugh and T. San says is that a habit. The guy says this can't be the earth. They've got so many players but can't stop those monsters and he says they shouldn't lie to him. T. San says it started again. Most of the players who came back to Earth from the labyrinth. It's a common occurrence and it's not something easy to accept and he says there's only one way. He will accept it if he's beaten and he asks him his name and requests a duel. The guy says his name is Li Chang Chun and he asks T. San who he is and he tells him. Chang Chun says so he's the guy who always talks a lot in the community on the easy player topic and he says that's funny. An easy player dares to request a duel with a hard player, and he says that doesn't he know that the power of the players varies greatly depending on the difficulty level. T. Sun tells him to shut up and come at him. If he wins, he's going to show him the real world he wants so much. 
Chang Chun draws his sword and says he shouldn't regret it later and says even if they fight to death, he won't know. Chang Chun activates addition, focus, and strong strike, and he attacks T San. Meanwhile, T San activates his first attack nullification, and he stops Chang Chun's sword attack with his hand. Chang Chun says, Does his attack not work? He's nullifying his first attack. He's never heard of anything like that, and T San tells him it's his turn now, and he hits Chang Chun. Chang Chun's resilience reduces incoming damage by half, but T San's absolute judgment ignores the opponent's defensive power and skill, which makes Chang Chun suffer 49 damage. Chang Chun says only 49 damage, right the absolute stat and level difference between easy and hard players can't be narrowed and T San says he has over 1000 stamina right, and he activates addition, multiplication and absolute judgment. Chang Chun tells T San to hold on but T San tries to hit him, and he bends down but T San hits him into the ground which makes him suffer 4604 damage. T San asks him that does he accept it now that this is really the earth? But Cheng Chun says he shouldn't make him laugh and says why is the world like that? If he knew it's going to be like that, he wouldn't have cleared the labyrinth. When the world was still at peace, one day, the sky suddenly split and a monster jumped out. Then a choice presented to humans, players who enter the labyrinth by selecting a difficulty level, have to clear the labyrinth and return to Earth. To an Earth overflowing with monsters, bound to destruction. T. San says what can they do, they should try their best to save the world, even if it's like that. Young Jun tells T. San he has been working and T. San says he arrived, and he says of course he'd come to see him in action and T. San tells him to stop the nonsense. Young Jun says T. San is truly remarkable, even for hard players, it was quite the blow but T. San says is there anything impressive about defeating such a weakling and Young Jun says it's not that he's weak. T. San is just too strong. T. San says the food is getting cold, and he says that's why he didn't want to go and Young Jun says what's with his multiplier skill, absolute judgment, defense ignored, and he says where are those kind of skills from, and he says what kind of cheat skill is first attack nullified. Young Jun says there are skills only T. San possess, and he asks him where he got them from and T. San says he got them through hard work. Young Jun says he always says that, and they hear some noise and Young Jun says is another player there. What a bountiful day and T. San says he doesn't think so. It seems like Lee T. Yon has arrived. T. San is inside a building with lots of arts, and he says despite humanity's impending extinction, they are fussing over decorations. They are disgustingly obsessed with things like that. T. San touches a painting and says outside where all kind of monsters roam. A person who can bring such a large painting without a single scratch. The only human who has quickly cleared the mode, and he says why is the strongest human a woman like her Lee Tion? Tion says especially in times like these, obsession with something is important, and she says how about getting a hobby like her and T. San says they will talk about that when they have some spare time, and he asks her what he called him for. Tion asks T. San if he educated the rookie in hard mode, and she says an easy player teaching a hard player. That's a strange story to hear no matter when you hear it. Tion shows T. San her stats, and he says is that boasting, and she says just a simple check, and she asks him to show her his stats too and T. San says it feels like bragging, and he says an easy player feeling sorry for themselves, are they? T. San shows her his stats and she says as expected. He's disgustingly weak and T-San says is she suggesting they fight, but she says didn't she say it's just a simple check. But for an easy player he's fairly decent. The labyrinth, divided into four different difficulties. The moment a player clears a labyrinth, all growth halts, making it impossible to become stronger. The gap in power depending on the difficulty was drastic. A hard player's stats were barely higher than T-San's. However, none of them could withstand even a single strike from T-San. The reason for that is the skills T-San possess. T-Yon tells T-San to stay still and she activates her addition, multiply and sure hit skill and she tells him her next attack will definitely hit and she attacks him. T-Yon says skills can be obtained regardless of difficulty and each of the skills possessed by T-San are. T-San's first attack absolute nullification is activated and he receives zero damage but the wall behind him is destroyed. 
T-san asks T-yon what she's doing, and she says it's nothing, and that absolute nullification, absolute judgment, multi-layered attack, many times stop, such absurd skills, and she says does he have about 200 skills, and he says roughly 230. Tion says he said he gained those skills while playing the tower elements right. They had to fully grasp the tower just like him. They should have strived to be the strongest, not just focused on clearing, but he says who knows, it's all in the past anyway. Tion says that might not necessarily be true, and she says anyways he's amazing. If he had played in the solo mode, they might have had a chance to win. T San's skills are strong, but most are used based on stats. If he had been a hard player, no even a normal player, so the current T-San can't even use half of his skills. T-San says can they stop talking about that now, and he says they should get to the point, and he says she went scouting, didn't she and she says that's correct the next wave is about to start and T-San says it's over. The wave of monsters attacking, each time a wave starts many people die, and the territory shrinks significantly, in the first wave humanity lost soul, in the second wave, in the second wave half of the hard players lost their lives. In the third wave they could only defend a small city, and this is the fourth wave. T Sen asks Tion how many there are, and she says to us class, dozens of a class, and hundreds of B class and the apostles. T Sen says that in a situation where even Tion barely handles to us class, they don't have barely enough hard players to handle a class and an apostle surpassing us class, and he says is defeat inevitable. Tion tells T Sen that they have to struggle, and she asks him to please handle the 2S class, and he asks her if she wants him to die, and she says she has to face the apostle, and there's no one to handle the S class. T Sen says that's asking a lot, and she says should she announce it, and T Sen says they should at least prepare mentally. Should he let them die without doing anything, and she says that might make her happier, and he says he doesn't think so. Tion says T San is strong and could lead to victory, but she's just a coward. Yong Jun is sitting on a wall and says he knew this day would come, but it's really disgusting. T San says what about him, and he tells him, he can't complain considering the situation where everyone is dying. He has lived quite a long time. This is almost like a luxury. T San asks Yong Jun what luxury has to do with dying, and he says Cheng Chun is quite pitiful, and Yong Jun says he guesses. After struggling to clear all of this, he might have to die just the day he saw the outside world. He really has no luck. Cheng Chun says what about T-San? Honestly he would feel like he's the most frustrated. Of they did half as much as him they would not have faced extinction and T-San says yes he's so frustrated he could die and says is that enough? The monsters start coming through the portal and Cheng Chun says wow, he's going crazy and asks T-San who he has to fight, and he tells him 2S class and Chang Chun says he will see him in the afterlife because he thinks he will go first, and he asks him to wait for him and T San says got it. T San activates a great leap and then leaps into the sky, and he activates full scouting, and he says he found them and lands between the 2S class monsters. His system tells him he has made eye contact with terrible things, and it checks for insanity, fear, confusion and instant death, and it tells him all checks successful. He endured with indomitable spirit. His mind will never break, and it says his body is imbued with unyielding resilience and T-San tells the monsters to die. T-San says it will be fine as long as it is not the defensive type, and he activates full recon, and he sees that the monster is a defensive type with 148,551,233 in stamina. The monster tries to attack him, and he avoid it by activating physical time acceleration, and he says stamina 140m. What nonsense is that, and how long will it take to catch it calling it a jerk? T Sen says all right then, and he faces the other monster who is a ranged defense with 1,255,212 in 212 stamina, and he says 1.25 in stamina, now that one seems more possible, and he says well it's still as hard though. T Sen attacks the monster's tentacles dealing it 42, 38 and 32 damage, and he says so the tentacles bear less damage, and he says he needs to aim for the head, and he jumps towards it, but the monster shoots some sort of green energy beam at him, and his absolute nullification is activated, which makes him suffer zero damage. T. Sen says the tentacles shoot in the way they point to. There is no delay, so there is no use in trying to avoid them. 
so the most effective thing to do is to predict it. If he tries hard enough and precisely avoid it, he will be able to do it. The longer he tries to figure out the shots, the more possible he is to lose. He activates hyper-acceleration and he says he needs to be as fast as possible and he attacks it, but he only deals 48 damage to it and the monster attacks the second time and T-San's absolute nullification activates again and he suffers zero damage. T-San jumps up in an attempt to attack the monster, but it is protected, and he says the ranged defensive type always receive protection from the defensive type. It's after all why the defensive type was created, but he's got them, and he activates Force Duel which creates a force field that traps him and the defensive monster inside with the offense monster, not being able to penetrate it. T-San's system tells him he will not receive any damage for one minute, except from the defensive monster and T-San says if t Yon was there instead of him, it would have been easier. It's because she possesses natural stats and legendary equipment by clearing the solo mode. Take-San activates the plus feature the multiple feature and absolute judgment, and he says the defensive type couldn't give damage to Tion. The ranged defensive type should be attacked first, but the defensive type will die slowly. But he cannot do that. With his low stats, no matter which type it is, he will lose, and he says 9 and 604 it's still lacking. T. San activates a reset for his active skills, which means he will not be able to use the designated skill for one month, and he resets the multiply feature. He says maybe he should attack the ones with low stamina first. He can only rely on his skills now. T. San says 9604 squared is still not even close to the number 100 million, and he says he's going to try until he reaches his limit, and he activates the impersonation feature and slashes the monster which deals 92,236,816 damage to it, and the monster passes out. T. San suffers 20,543 damage from the offensive monster, and he activates the holding on feature. The deadly attack is nullified, and for 5 minutes all damages will be 00 and T. San says attack nullification has finished. Now what's left is to hold on a bit longer, and he deals 48 damage to the offense monster, and he says now he just needs to repeat avoiding and punching. Just like a normal fight, but the problem is his magic point is only remaining 21. Tixan says he needs to cut 1,250,000 points with just attacks, no longer skills, and he says he should think simply and attack it 25,000 times, and he says he thinks he's going crazy. T-San attacks the monster and reduces its stamina gradually, and his system tells him he has entered a state of mindless immersion. Something like a miracle just happened. He has obtained the soul skill, Spiritual Rise, and T-San says how noisy, and he deals 48 damage to the monster, and it dies, and his system tells him the gods of all dimensions are amazed at his achievement. Take-San says how hard did he fight? It feels like he has been fighting for months. The freaking lack of staffs is driving him crazy, and he says he should go back home. T-San is walking back home, and he sees lots of dead bodies on the floor, and he sees the body of a guy, and he says he was so sure and always praised himself as the best hard player. Doesn't he think he's the best player already? Why does he think he's too easy, and he remembers the guy asking him why he's feeling empty right after he won a match. Take-San sees Young Jun body on the floor, and he says everything is evolving according to what he said and Lee T. Yon the one and only the only one who cleared the most difficult solo mode, revered as the strongest woman on earth, and he says what killed her. T-San sees the apostle who says he will soon see his death and T-San says it's noisy and that he should put that away, and he activates the essence blow and stabs the apostle. The apostle pierces T-San's body and throws him away and T-San says so it's come to this. His system tells him his HP has reached zero and invincibility triggered forced survival for the next minute. T-Sen says it should go easy on him and that he can't feel anything below his waist and he says was his heart pierced or spine snapped and he says invincibility is just a stay of execution not a recovery. In a minute he will probably die just like that. Seems like that creature knows it too. Take-Sen says fuck if only he hadn't chosen easy mode back then, even normal mode would have been better and he says no the useless bunch. All they cared about was clearing levels not building strength. Why are they so weak, even after choosing normal or hard mode, if only they'd managed to keep up with half his pace, and he says is it done? It's in the past and it was his choice, 
there's no point blaming others, humanity ends there. T. San sees a stone shining from T. Yon's hand, and he says is the creature trying to protect something and T. San starts crawling towards her, and his system tells him he has activated his last chance. Do he can use one skill without any restriction, and he activates temporal pause which stops time within a 100m radius for two minutes. T. San takes the stone from T. Yon and his system tells him the Auroboros stone has been expelled the divine stone that controls the cycle of all things. It can rewind time once for a single person and T. San says why would T. Yon have that and Monster tries to attack him from above, but he uses the stone and says see you later kiddo. Take San sees himself as a child and remembers being called a bottom feeder and being asked why the hell he was born, and he says as a kid, he was just his parents' stress relief. Their words made him believe that he was worthless, and that's what led him to choose easy mode, but not anymore. He now knows his worth and potential, so this time. T. San wakes up in a room and says where is he? He sits up, checks the date on his phone, and says he has really gone back. January 1, 2020, the exact moment the new year began, the start of Earth's destruction. Take San says he can't believe he's having pizza again, after the apocalypse, all he ate was potatoes and monster carcasses. He says he didn't expect T. Yon to have a time-reversing item, and he says why didn't she use it until the very end? If it's the T. Yon he knew, she'd have fled, he just doesn't get it. Take San walks to the balcony and says is it almost time? The world must be counting down right now, hoping everything will be better in the new year. Sadly, the world ends at the same time as the new year begins. The sky splits open and a monster comes through. T. San says back, then he was just bewildered. Now he knows what is a B-class monster. A hard player can easily handle a monster of this level. Anyways it's about time isn't it? A panel appears in front of everybody telling them their world will be destroyed by invaders. All the weapons they have tirelessly created is useless against them. But they shouldn't worry, a merciful entity sympathizing with their plight is giving them a chance, so they should choose their desired place and enter the labyrinth they should clear the labyrinth and obtain power. Take San says what mercy, they are just some beings amused by their suffering and he says well shall they get going. Easy mode with abundant food supplies and resting places scattered throughout the maze, this mode promises to be a boon to you, even the ordinary and frail. With enough effort can clear this mode someday. Normal mode food will be scarce, and resting points in the maze are significantly fewer than in easy mode. Survival is challenging, but with determination and resilience in the face of despair, clearing this mode is possible. Hard mode is a mode that will test your limits. Food is extremely scarce and resting points are scant. Monsters will gladly risk their lives to kill you. If you didn't ensure maximum safety, you will lose your life in a horrific way. Solo mode is the mode where you are on your own. You won't meet anyone from your world. The only things you will encounter here are monsters, adversaries, and NPCs. In this place that tests everything luck, talent, wisdom, and strategy, your survival is impossible. If you value your life, avoid choosing this difficulty. T. Sen says it's beyond their right. Wait for me, and he selects the solo mode, and he arrives in the labyrinth and he says the longing and patience one feels. After a long time he has returned to this place. T. Sen checks the system and sees a post, and he says already posted. He dad he doesn't know who it is, but they adapt quickly. T. Sen says the community is the only window for conversations with people from different difficulties. It was a great help when others shared their strategies. He says the community can only be utilized later, so it doesn't matter now. What needs to be checked now is... T. San remembers T. Yon asking him about the easy money NPCs and he told her just NPCs with predetermined answers and repetitive behaviors and he asked what's the difference and she told him it was different. The NPCs in the solo mode are, they possessed genuine intelligence and moved freely, almost like real people. Take San gets to the gate and sees the gatekeeper guarding the entrance to the maze and he says he was just an ordinary white-haired old man in easy mode. The gatekeeper says he's there already. He thought it would take about a month and T. San says it's stronger than T. Yon and says is that what they call a gatekeeper. The gatekeeper says first of all congratulations, he's Brokeman, the guardian of the place and his guide and T. San says Brokeman huh? And he says a failed challenger becoming a gatekeeper seems plausible doesn't it? Brokeman says he has roughly heard of it hasn't he? 
His world is being destroyed by invaders, and this place is an opportunity bestowed upon them by a merciful transcendent. This merciful being sure is filthy, it would have been happier to just perish. T. Sun says he spoke as if he has experienced it himself. T. Yon was right. The NPCs in solo mode are truly alive. Moreover they come from a destroyed world and Brokeman looks at him and wonders why he's so calm. If he lived in a peaceful world and came there, shouldn't he be panicking? So he thought of beating him up and then explaining, but he's pretty calm. Brokeman tells T-San that anyways it's a maze, some call it a tower, labyrinth, but he can call it whatever he wants. It has a total of 100 floors with major changes every 10 floors. Naturally, it gets more difficult the deeper he goes. He must find his own food within the maze, and he must find out the specifics on his own. That's it. T-San says is that all and Brokeman says does he want him to explain what's on the first floor what's on the second floor and so on, and he says there's a guy inside selling stuff. He should ask him and T. San remembers T. Yon telling him the gatekeeper is bad-tempered and would beat one up if one complains. She almost died before entering the maze. T. San says he should better just keep his mouth shut here and Brokeman says he should at least give him the basics. He summons a cloth, a sword and also a spear and swings it towards T-San, but he doesn't move, and he tells T-San to take the sword and cloth. T-San's system says the sun-faded leather armor defense plus one, can prevent minor cuts and bruises, and the rusty sword attack plus one, seems like it will break soon. T-San tells Brokeman they are subpar, and he says what he doesn't like it. T-San says no and Brokeman looks at him curiously and T-San asks what happened, and he says he should never mind and gives him a worn-out wrist guard defense plus one. Has lost its original value from prolonged use, seems like it can protect against animal bites. T-San says what's this? As far as he knows T-Yon never received such a guard and Brokeman says various skills will be added, so he should check those on his own as well and he tells him to enter then and T. San says yes and thanks him. Brokeman wishes him good luck and says was he smiling as if he's excited to enter the maze. Brokeman says as a gatekeeper he has met so-called genius challengers but none of them have ever conquered the maze. But the guy he just saw had something different, not just simple talent or ability, but something more fundamental, the power to survive and he says he hopes he survives. The system tells T-San the maze is a place created by a great wizard Long, and there's a rumor that it grants one wish to whoever conquers it. The place is a prison where horrific entities move without a breath and living things die. Everything in this place exists to oppress him. Eternal glory awaits him, who will break through the deep, dark abyss. T arrives at the first floor, the entrance to the maze, and the system tells him it's a place where things when stabbed live. The power of this place is not that strong and T-Sen says shall he get started and the main quest is initiated.